I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You're about to hear Revelations by Jacoby Johnson, a playwright and actor based in the Twin Cities. The cast includes John Douglas Thompson, Tony nominee for Broadway's Jitney and featured on HBO's Mayor of Easttown, Lady Dane Figueroa Aditi, multi-talented artist and winner of the Helen Hayes Award, and Lynette R. Freeman, member of Ensemble Studio Theater and a prolific audiobook narrator. They are directed by Goldie E. Patrick, whose credits include Paradise Blue at the Detroit Theater and Playing on Air's recording of Giselle the Gazelle. And now, Revelations. We're in Minneapolis in June of 2020. Mahalia stands before a burnt-out building burned beyond recognition or memory of its former purpose. A man emerges from the wreckage, carrying a small box, tries to step over the rubble and debris, and trips. Mahalia catches him. Mm. Careful! What are you doing? I'm fine. You shouldn't be in there. I'm fine. It's dangerous in there. Anything could happen, especially with your back. My back is fine. I'm fine. Could you please just give me some room? Yeah, sorry. Mm. You sure you're okay? Well... All things considered. Here, take this box for me. Hey, Daddy. Hey, sweetheart. Didn't expect to see you here. What do you mean, of course I'm here? Of course, huh? So it only takes a burning building for you to come around. Daddy. Uh, No, I'm just asking. Been a long time, hasn't it? Can we not? I just got here. Ain't been here ten minutes and you already want to start. I ain't trying to start nothing. I'm asking a question. Do you want me to go? Because I'll go if you want me to. I came here for you. I didn't ask for that. Fine. Take your box. See you when I see you. Wait. Wait. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I just... uh, Please don't go. You gonna behave? Yeah. You promise? I promise. Pinky promise. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Get over here, girl. Answer the question. Come on now. Answer. Pinky promise. Now come here. You forgot how a pinky promise works? You have to blow. What? You have to lock pinkies and then blow into your fist. Since when? Since always. I've heard some people kiss into the fist instead of blowing, but that's a little too much for me. In this family... We blow. Yeah, I don't think that means what you think it means. Would you just do it? I don't know if that's a good idea. Why not? There is still an airborne virus going around. COVID's a baddie. Is she now? (laughs) You damn straight. Well, it don't count if you don't blow. Can you make an exception? Never. (sighs) Now it's a deal. You all right? Where you living now? Everything quiet by you? Yeah, it's been all right. I'm in St. Paul now, Mm. in the artist loft near Midway. Mm. There's activity a couple of blocks in either direction, but my stretch has been quiet. Mm. I'd ask how things are over here, but that seems like a dumb question. There are no dumb questions. I'm sorry, what? You heard me. Wow. It really has been a long time. Mm. Where's mom? Last time I checked, she was down the block helping Tanya clean. They got Tanya's place, too. Not as bad as this. A few smash windows. She'll be okay. Good. Do you think she'll text you when she's coming back? Tanya? Probably not. She ain't never even pretended to like me. I met Mom. It was a joke. Couldn't you tell from my tone? How many times do I have to tell you you're not funny? Funnier than you. You wish. Whatever you have to tell yourself to go to sleep at night. (laughs) What? Sleep? Who she? You can say that again. Sleep? Who she? (laughs) (laughs) You, You look good. Yellow's a good color on you. Every color is a good color on me. 
You ain't never lied. What's that? Curfew alert. I should head home soon. What time is it? 8.45. Curfew's not till 10. Stay a little while longer. Play a game with me. A game? Yeah. It's called Revelations or 2020. What is that? I'll give you a scenario and you tell me whether it happened in the book of Revelations or in the year 2020. How did you come up with this? I, I heard it on a podcast. A podcast? Yeah. It's called Daddy Issues. <laughs> These two comedians talk about fatherhood and pop culture. Did you start listening to podcasts? Like I said, been a long time. Now, you gonna play with me or not? Ten minutes, and then I gotta go. That's all I need. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Uh, <laughs> all right. Number one. A lone man shall ride through the marketplace on a horse of black and white. What? A lone man shall ride through a marketplace. No, on a I heard you. I'm just so confused. Revelation to 2020. Okay, okay. Give me a second. Do, 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 the dreadhead cowboy out in Chicago, it was in the news. I heard he stole a police horse. Nope, it was his horse. Brothers ride horses too. On to number two. Unleashed is a white horse whose crowned rider, equipped with a bow, goes out to conquer. This is absurd. Revelations or 2020. I don't even believe in God, Dad. I wouldn't know Revelations from Harry Potter. All those years of Bible study and you don't know Revelations? It's the most exciting part. All those years of Bible study taught me two things. God don't like me, and I don't need God. I think everyone needs God. Which one of ones you choose? Well, that's up to you, but we all need God in some form. Okay, Dad. Now, Revelations or 2020? Don't you have some other podcast game we can play? Oh, come on, come on, David. We're having fun. Uh, I mean, Mahalia. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I. I'm, That's not my name. I, I know. Do you? I do. Y your name is Mahalia. Mahalia after the street your grandmother lived on. Uh, Mahalia, my daughter. You've been Mahalia for three years now. I've always been Mahalia. Yes. Right. I'm sorry. I think I should go. Sweetheart, please. Don't. I'm not your sweetheart. Stop. I'm sorry. Tell mom I said hi or don't. Who cares? Let me drive you. I have a car. Where'd you get a car? Long time, remember? I woke up this morning in terror. Trans woman attacked in Minneapolis. That, that's all I saw on Facebook. I scrolled and scrolled. No name. No location, no picture, just trans woman attacked in Minneapolis. My heart leapt into my throat. The ground opened up and swallowed me whole. The sky unleashed a downpour that reduced my existence to nothing but tears. And I wanted to text you, to call you, but I was too afraid. Too afraid of the black hole that would grow and grow if you didn't respond. So I chose not to. I swallowed my emotions and choked them down until I knew for sure. I couldn't even talk to your mother about it. Even the word trans leads to an argument, a hurling of insults, a declaration of divorce. So I kept quiet and went on about the day, cleaning up, moving forward. Then I saw you here. I saw you before you saw me. I grabbed that box, that box being the last memory of what this place was. And I walked out and I tripped on purpose because I knew that if I did, you would catch me. I'm sorry, Mahalia. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. Breathe. Let's just reset. 
It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Do you know her? Not all trans people know each other. I know, but do you? I do. I can't visit her because of COVID, but I got a text from her roommate saying she's stable. Good. That's good. She'll pull through. She's been through worse. We all have. I'm scared for you all the time. I'm scared for you too. All the time. I've thought about protesting every day. Keywords, thought about. I wake up and I say, today's the day. The day I get involved, the day I scream and march and revolt from my existence, mine and yours. And then I just lay there, frozen, paralyzed. Because the truth is, for people like me, if the police don't get us, someone else will. Possibly one of our own. And I can't risk it. I should. I know I should, but I wanna live so bad. All I want is to be alive. Am I bad? No. No. You're not bad. You're afraid. And that's okay. But if you don't mind my advice, don't stay frozen for too long. We need you. Because you may be afraid now, but I know for a fact that you're the bravest person I know. Much much braver than I am. I'm sorry about the store. It's okay. The store can be rebuilt. I, I, I can rebuild this. Breathe new life into this. And, and that's what I'll do. And rebuild, survive, endure. Not thrive? Eh, well, we'll see. Daddy? Yes, sweetheart? When did you get a Facebook... <clears throat> <laughs> Girl, I've been had a Facebook. I'm out here. I may be old, but I'm out here. In fact, there should be a friend request waiting for you. I'm not accepting that. What? You heard me. I'm not accepting that. What? Why not? You want to see twerk videos of me dancing in cages? I most certainly do not. Didn't think so. In cages? Don't kink shame me. I would never. I don't even know what that means. (laughs) (laughs) Hey! Hey. Hey, Mom. You just heard Revelations by Jacoby Johnson. It was directed by Goldie E. Patrick and featured John Douglas Thompson as Curtis, Lady Dane Figueroa Aditi as Mahalia, and Lynette R. Freeman as Valerie. Hi, I'm Jacoby Johnson, and I am the playwright of Revelations. Hi, I am Goldie Patrick, and I am the director of Revelations. Hi, I'm Lady Dane Figueroa Aditi, and I play Mahalia in Revelation. Hello, I'm Lynette R. Freeman. I play Valerie in Revelations. Hello, I'm John Douglas Thompson. I play Curtis in Revelations. It's so wonderful to have you all here. Playwright Jacoby Johnson. Were the Minneapolis riots of summer 2020 the fire that sparked this play? Uh, Yes. Yeah, I've been in Minneapolis for about 10 years. So I was here during George Floyd's murder and the uprising that took place after. And that was the spark of the play. In the midst of the uprising, there was a horrible attack on a trans woman named Ayanna Dior. And it just got me thinking about the unique position of trans people of color in our community. And I think 
this time around, Black Lives Matter, when we say that phrase, we realize that we need to really make sure it's all Black lives. Black male lives, Black female lives, Black trans lives, Black queer lives. We have to open ourselves up and let it be all encompassing. And so I wanted to write something that first and foremost felt very human, a universal relationship, but also very specific in our community. Yeah. Director Goldie Patrick, the destruction at that time of someone like Curtis's business and neighborhood in this play prompts his daughter Mahalia to return. Goldie, how much do you view Revelations as a story about family? When I read Jacoby's script, it took no time to jump on board to direct because it is so timely and so necessary, because it addresses all the layers. I think when we think of family, the beautiful part about family is we have the family that we're born to, but we also have the family that we choose. And there are so many conversations that I've been able to witness or participate in about what happens when the family that you're born into doesn't understand uh, who you've become, how important it is to have a family that you choose that does do that. And so it's about family in the sense of we're looking at the dynamics between Curtis and Mahalia and Valerie for sure, but it's also about these smaller pockets of family. So when Curtis is talking to Mahalia about the trans woman being attacked, that's part of Mahalia's family, right? Because there's a community within that. And so I think it addresses family on so many levels, which is the conversation that needs to be had. Yeah. We hear about Valerie, Curtis's wife and Mahalia's mother throughout the play. The script makes it clear that Valerie's been particularly unable able to accept that her daughter is transgender. How do you think Jacoby's story is somehow clarified and maybe encapsulated by Valerie's sudden appearance at the final moment? What I think is just a really smart choice as a playwright, because it throws in reality in the midst of progress. The progress is happening between Curtis and Mahalia, and it's beautiful. And the reality is, is that it is happening in its own kind of secrecy because Valerie exists. So whatever progressive conversations you have with one person in the safe secrecy of the two of you and your relationship has to stand up outside of that. So it's great to be comfortable and an ally with one. You have to do it in front of everybody. And so Valerie is that reminder that Curtis has to show up in front of Valerie as an advocate for Mahalia. And I thought that was a beautiful reminder for the audience that however we may testify to one of the allies or advocates, the question is, can we do it all the time, even when it is inconvenient? But what I love about that Valerie moment is the joy. I love the joy that Mahalia and Curtis are in the midst of because she's witnessing that. So we don't get to know exactly how she feels about it, but there's joy in that moment. And so her her deciding to not be a part of Mahalia's life has kept her out of Mahalia's joy. Exactly, exactly. I think that Curtis has a certain grace to him in his relationship with Mahalia that allows for her expansion. And I think that the end moment is really perfect because it's like there is very much this triangle that happens because there's Curtis's relationship with Valerie. And then you have mother and daughter, which is fractured and from Valerie's eyes, still quite new, but she actually hasn't done any tending to that garden at all. And a lot of that... I think probably on Valerie's side (laughs) comes from an inability to see or understand change and see and understand her daughter outside of her experience of her child. Then there's Mahalia's relationship with Valerie. You know, there's something I think when we encounter folks who don't want us to be the full version of ourselves Ultimately, there's always just a fight. All those things that uh, Mahalia is talking about at the end of her monologue about some of this might happen by our own people's hands. It's like she's talking about her mother. And then you have Mahalia and Curtis, which also I think that Valerie stepping in and, and looking at them having fun. There is a jealousy there. She wants in. She, wants, she does she want in, but fun. she doesn't know how to yeah. get there without without giving certain things that she's not willing to give. Now Curtis has to step in and protect his daughter from his wife. I, I think he has, of certainly of the two, been much more 
accepting and willing to answer the hard questions, be in this very complex relationship and be accepting of it. And part of that is certainly being an ally. So that last moment, I guess it could be played so many different ways of us enjoying each other's company and having a laugh together. But just the fact that we are together, but I get the impression that Curtis has been doing the work and whenever he tries to talk about it to Valerie, it becomes, as he says in the monologue, it becomes an argument. And I think he tells that to his daughter to say, this is what it's like between me and your mom here. She hasn't been able to accept where we want this to go or where you want this to go. And I'm working on it as hard as I possibly can. Well, I wonder, Jacoby, as a playwright, right, you don't have to answer this, but as I was reading it, I was wondering, I was like, well, what would happen with the play if actually her being trans isn't the issue, right? Like, if that don't even come up in the play, actually. Because what are the things that actually keep parents from being in the lives of their children or children be- from being in the lives of their parents? One thing that comes up in the play often is this idea of violence. And I think that we oftentimes, when we're having conversations about the ways in which transphobia, homophobia, and patriarchy shows up within the Black community itself, we're oftentimes not having conversations in which we are saying to folks, it is not because of this person's identity that violence has been met on them. It is because there are systems that actually reward people when they do violence to folks who have these identities. To offer Valerie some grace, you know, I mean, listen, I got a cousin who I totally walked away from and ain't talked to her in like five years. And for the same reasons, I said, nah, girl, Um, (laughs) you just misgendering the girls. I said, no, honey, that is not what we do in this family and this household as for me and my house. But I wonder too, right, like Valerie is a woman. Yes, she is a cis woman. And she knows what it means to be a Black woman in a world that does not honor or love or celebrate or center Black women. And there is also a certain fear that she has about the fact that her child is a Black woman. Because perhaps she believed that at least you have the protection of this thing. Jacoby. You include a quote from Revelations on the title page of your script, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Why did you signal this line from Revelations to your readers and audience? Well, also on that page, there's a, an incredible image from uh, the riots or the uprising on Lake Street where there's a liquor store on fire and there's a young man waving an American flag and it's just his silhouette. And so a lot of the things I was thinking about with including that quote and the picture and setting it at this burned down building is after something burns, then there's a chance to renew what can be forged through fire. Sometimes the thing, the foundation of the thing that we've, we're trying to build upon isn't good. At the root, at the foundation, it needs to be completely redone. Revelations is so much about getting rid of this world that we live in now. It's about getting rid of it and starting anew. Listen, systems are tangibly violent, but they are sometimes hard to touch. Systems are felt, but they are invisible. It is clearing a path forward in some sense. I know my character says, you know, rebuild, survive, but it does in some manner offer a roadmap forward. What are we going to do after this? How are we going to come together? How is this going to define our path forward? And I see it as a positive path. We'll come out of this learning and hopefully growing and coming together with love. I mean, as simple as that sounds, but just trying to find ways to reconnect in our relationships with those things that are important to us and going forward, not the way that we got here, but charting a new path to move forward. Well, I want to thank you all, not just for your time and your talent, but for sharing your thoughts about this piece with us today. You've been listening to Playing On Air, great American short plays with great American actors. Assistant producers, Rachel Creedberg and Aditya Pratama. Marketing and education manager, Shelley Horwitz. Development, Lila Becker. Assistant to the Artistic Director, 
Eric Judson. Theme music, Tom Kocham. Play music, Jimmy Keys. Recording and sound design, John Kilgore. Audio editing, Rachel Creedberg. Playing on Air is distributed by PRX, Public Radio Exchange. For Playing on Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening. <laughs>